You're standing in front of a braai or a barbecue and your friends made it a bit hot and your eyebrows start getting really hot. You put your hand up and your eyebrows are now safe. What you've just cut out is the radiation. The temperature of the gas in, touch, in contact with your face is still the same, but you've cut, cut out the bulk of the incident electromagnetic radiation coming onto your face. And in fire design, radiation is a very important factor because at higher temperatures, it really is the bulk of the energy entering your beam, steel, concrete, whatever it is. Radiation is a very, very important um, factor that we need to consider. So we're going to be looking now just at the configuration factor and just thinking how much energy enters into it, uh, enters into our section. In the bulk of um, the equations you'll do as a structural engineer or find you, this isn't that serious. You won't use it on a regular basis, but the concept becomes very critical when you've got smaller items with known emitters and seeing now, here's my emitter, here's my receiver, how much is going to get there, especially for instance in a lab scenario, you want to test a piece of timber or concrete in front of a radiant panel. So on the one side you've got a 100 by 100 radiant panel, on the other side you've got a 100 by 100 timber sample. And you might think, yes, this is going to have uniform radiation over the whole surface, but in fact it's not. Um, even though they're the same size, we're going to see from the configuration factor, it might not be as uniform as you think. Because here's our heat flux. So that's how much heat flux is arriving, how much electromagnetic radiation is burning your eyebrows. And that is to do with your configuration factor times your emissivity times Stefan Boltzmann constant. And then the temperature of your emitter to the power four and always in Kelvin, be very careful always in Kelvin, minus the temperature of your receiver to the power of four. And there we've got our radiator and our receiver. Um, and then we're looking at how much energy arrives at that point. How hot is that piece of steel there, concrete, whatever it is, how hot is that going to get from our radiation? And as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a fire, normally there's just radiation everywhere. This is where you've got a specific radiator at a position. And now looking at the configuration factor, which um, is written up here, one way you can think about this, imagine once again, here's my example of my 100 by 100 ra radiant panel. And a radiant panel is just kind of a glorified heater, those gas heaters you have in your home. Um, producing a heat flux and the nice thing is that only um, basically radiation arrives on your receiver. So now here is my receiver. This is my piece of timber or whatever it is and let's say I'm looking at that little square. How hot does that little square get and does that one get as hot as that one or as hot as that one? And we can do that using this equation just by looking at how much temperature rises by how much energy arrives. For instance, because this is the integral it's an integral, which basically means that every little block here will emit and every block here will receive. But if we break it down to one at a time, so here is our receiver. So that will receive energy from every little one millimeter squared or one centimeter squared, depending on what block size and use, and it will arrive. And we, if we sum this up, which is then the cos of the angles, multiply distance or over pi r squared, we'll end up with how much arrives at this square here and then we can see how fast it heats up and also the distribution. Is it uniform or is it not? As this gets smaller, this will become non-uniform. As this gets really bigger, then it'll become very uniform. By the time this is infinitely big, if you have an infinitely big emitter, then it'll just be a uniform heat flux arriving. So if 100 kilowatts a square meter is emitted, 100 kilowatts a square meter will be received by the whole face. But if there this, for instance, is smaller, it's not going to be 100 everywhere at all at once because then you've effectively got zero emitters on the outside. So less is received and you'll have hotter um, zones in the middle and cooler zones around the outside. And that's something just to think about, especially if you've got, for instance, a beam or column in front of a window and there's only a point source of energy coming out onto this. Depending on where that column is, it will receive different amounts of energy. So just by having a knowledge of the configuration factor, you can start getting an idea of how hot, how fast is my beam column timber, whatever it is going to be. Uh, as I said, you're not regularly going to use this in practice, but it is a very, very useful concept to say radiator, distance, and how much arrives. So as the, the distance increases, as this decreases, all these things will influence then the rate of rise of your sample and the amount of radiant heat flux arriving at your sample. Thank you.